Hi guys, today's video is all about variegation. The strips of my begonia. The strips of my begonia. No! You can't see that at all. Oh, do you know, this thing is putting out, it's growing so fast. And now we've got thrips. How annoying. I'm sorry, mate. Maybe it was just one. It's never just one. Right, anyway. I've made a list of common questions that I get asked a lot or like that I've done blog posts on them and they're really popular. And I thought I'd just do it really quickly rather than like an in-depth, I'm not a botanist. Um, where, where somebody asked me why like the white parts of variegated plants burn and the green parts, but I mean, they, they both burn, but like the white ones burn really, really easily. And the only explanation I could come up with was that chlorophyll acts like sunscreen. That's not true, but that's just the level that we're dealing with here. But layman's terms, that's what we're going with. First question is why are plants variegated? And there's two main reasons. The first one is they are just, not, that's just the way they look. That is the pattern on their leaves. And it's usually an evolutionary thing to stop them being eaten by something. Usually an insect, sometimes, I don't know, like a bear. Um, I can't think of any examples right now because, which is ridiculous because there's so many that like grow in my garden, but um, I'll find one and write it on the screen. Second reason is just, it's just a genetic quirk that happens and it happens, like there's so many of these things that happen, it's just so happened, I've said, I've said happened a lot, that we like variegation or uh, the plant community as a whole tend to like variegation there's a lot of people that hate it but um it's just a desirable trait like like pretty people <laughs> uh, we just like it so we encourage it to grow um because there are some ways you can encourage variegation and also some plants have been changed genetically to look like that uh, like tight constellation so sort of leading on from that people ask me all the time whether you can make plants variegated Yes, you can. Uh, an example of this would be the pink congo, but it's not, you've not made a, a non-valuable plant valuable. You've just, it's, you've basically faked it. It's not, you'd have to change the genetic level of the plant to make it genetically variegated. You could make a plant pink, just if you wanted a pink plant, but you can't say that it's rare if you've made it like that. Um, I can't remember which article it is, it is on my website, but somebody, I don't know where they're from, but she said in my, I don't even know that they're a woman, but she said in my country, they add something, I want to say like ethanol or something like that. I thought, God, that's common. If you add it to the soil, or I don't know how you do it, uh, you can make a plant variegated. It's just like, I don't understand why people don't do this if they want variegated plants. I can't imagine that that would um, be very good for your plant. Um, plus it's not the same. You know, you could buy a watch and that looked like an Apple watch and be like, look, I've got an Apple watch, but you would know in your heart it wasn't one. The problem when I write questions down is that I'm always like this. I was gonna like put it up there, but I, I didn't. Right, so this is a big one and it is, are variegated plants rare? Yes and no, some are and some aren't. And the price doesn't necessarily reflect how rare it is. And the main one obviously is the variegated monstera, the Albo one. Thai Constellation went through a phase of being not cheap. I've got mine for, I wanna say like 90 pounds. Um, and then the pandemic happened. So I got mine, I think I got mine in the January and then the pandemic happened in the March, like it it went global. Um, so, and then the prices skyrocketed again. So I think it may be a while till we get the cheap Thai constellations back. But the issue, so Monstera are not rare. The green ones or the variegated ones but they are in very high demand and 
because they grow they grow so quickly they are literally an invasive species in a, a lot of countries so it's in the producer's best interest to kind of stem the flow to keep the prices high and people think that this is like shady behavior and it is very much just economics that is just how it happens but because of the nature of plants i can only think in a few years we'll all have them because they're so iconic so many people are saving up for them so many people are getting them and having them and because plants grow like you can grow them and then you can sell them or give them away or something over time we will all have them i mean they will keep dying because plants but I don't know, Monsera were really popular in the 70s as well, and it's not, that's not like, I don't know. I think they will get cheaper over time, but I'm not an economist or a botanist, so, and I've also done no research into it, so who knows. Uh, the reason that plants like Monstera adansonii, the variegated ones, are so expensive, that's just a demand issue, and there won't be as many of them. But you might notice that the trends move extremely quickly. So I remember when Monstera, the variegated Monstera adansonii were so rare, so, so rare. And now they're, they're still expensive and they're quite rare, but only because they're commanding a price that isn't astronomical, but it's also not a plant we would be that bothered about getting. It's, it's more expensive than a, a regular uh, variegated Monstera deliciosa and i don't think the people that want one would get one and the people you know you wouldn't get both what am i trying to say they're at that midpoint where you're either going to spend the money or you're kind of not that kind of thousand pound mark i would never spend a thousand pounds on a plant ever um if it got down to 100, maybe, but I'm not that bothered. You know, Adansonii eyes are pretty cool anyway. I don't really need a white one. Plus, if you don't feed your monster Adansonii eyes, they look pretty variegated anyway. They go really, like, sick looking. <laughs> uh, so we've moved on from the... We moved on from the Adansonii eye, I think, quite quickly because um, somebody had a Rufidophora tetrasperma that was variegated I don't understand why you'd need both. They look so similar. Like, just to look at. <laughs> um, I'm a terrible plant collector. I just don't care. I think it's because I know if I spend a thousand pounds on it, I might kill it. So, you know, my care would have to improve and that's just not something I'm willing to compromise on. So, yeah, so uh, Rufidophora tetrasperma variegata was sold for some ridiculous price in New Zealand and then everyone was all over them. And um, because of the added media pressure, that kind of kept the price high a bit, but then it kind of died away a bit. And I think the plant collectors move on so quickly because there's always going to be something new. I'm sure somebody was saying there was variegated spirit, spirit of sanctity. And that's what we all move on to. Whether we get them or not, the trends move on and we're just less interested. And the people that are that, that don't do that aren't going to spend $5,000 on a variegated Rufidophora tetrasperma. Again, they'd still be looking at a variegated Monstera albo. So whilst they're not like rare, there's not that many of them. There could be more if market forces make it viable for uh, growers to keep pushing them. But I don't think they really are. On a completely different note, I did, did I finish that thought? Probably, probably not. Anyway, we've moved on. Um, variegated plants grow more slowly than non-variegated ones, which is another reason why they're more expensive. It it costs more for them to produce because the the, the turnover is slower. So that is another reason. Um, some variegated plants are expensive in a kind of different way in that they're not that expensive uh, you know the ticket price isn't you know a thousand pounds you might pay say a hundred pound for a variegated allocation compared to how much is it for uh, oh my phone i'm filming on my phone i can't tell you how much it is for a variegated allocation dragon scale i'll look it up and see if i can find it and put it on screen um 
but I got my dragon scale for about £15. They're, they're not that expensive. They just kind of exploded in po into popularity and they're quite easy to grow. Like mine grows like a weed compared to other alocasia. Like alocasia, Amazonica, mine, they always just die. I'm always left with a corm and one leaf. It's not, so it's not, it's not dead. But do you know what I mean? Like this looks like, my dragon scale looks like a plant. My alocasia looks like a leaf and it... Mm. Uh, but the thing about alocasia is they are notorious for reverting. They have really unstable variegation. My Amazonica was like hilariously unstable. It used to do like an almost fully variegated leaf, like big sectoral variegation. And then the next one it would have like a tiny speck and I was like, oh, maybe that's gone, it's gone. Then the next one, no variegation. And I was like, oh yeah, confirmed, gone. Next one, loads of variegation. There's just no like rhyme or reason to it. And then one day, It'll never be variegated again. That they just like that, and it's that risk that you take. I think is why that they're, they're not quite so popular. It's that risk, whereas, and I think that's why the Monstera Thai constellation was. I want to use the word necessary. It's not necessary. It was a prudent financial step for growers to take. If they could provide a plant that everybody wants and take away the one thing that maybe they'll go, oh, I'm not really sure. Because if you spend £500 on a variegated Monstera, what you don't want is to put it in a dark corner and have it become a 9 99 green one. So that I think that's why the Thai constellation was almost... Yeah, it was, it was sort of inevitable. Whereas... I have absolutely no idea how much time and effort and money went into creating that plant. I have no idea about plant genetics. So I think if another variegated plant is sort of taken into our hearts the way that the Albo Monstera was, it wouldn't surprise me if they did come up with a stable version. But I can't really think of any that people are like, yeah, that. Ahoya Bella has decided that it's summer. She's like, look, she's peduncles, many peduncles. God, I hate that word. Right, what are we on to now? I'm really surprised if any of this makes any sense. Uh, why do some variegated plants revert and why do some not? So, I don't know. The reason that some revert, so... <sighs> I don't know is the overarching uh, answer here. Variegation looks pretty to us, but it's kind of detrimental to plants in the wild, like albinism in a lot of animals. So things like, um, in the UK, we have wild rabbits, many of them. And quite often, especially around in my area, you get a lot of black ones um, because black rabbits can live alongside the regular, like agouti colored ones fairly happily. White ones stick out like a sore thumb. So like there'll be some like buzzard going, oh my God, oh my God, look that, there, 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 there. And they don't last. That's why goldfish, so goldfish are carp, but you don't really get them in the wild because they they glow. You can just, like, the herons will be like, there it is. That's why, that's why they get them out of ponds because they're just, it's just a beacon. Same with variegation in plants. It's not particularly desirable for the plant. I mean, you're not gonna get like predators going after it, but it's not a, a trait that is helpful it can be as i said earlier um some plants it tends to ones with small leaves have uh, like white edging and it just confuses predators and there is a theory that it looks like it's already infested with another bug i think now this is a, from research that i did years ago and I, could, I can't really remember it so i think what happens i think it's a specific plant and it looks like it's been attacked by a certain beetle this beetle also eats another kind of beetle which is likely to go on that plant so because the beetles like oh my god the, the beetle that's in that plant will kill me that leaves them alone well actually the plant's like i did that i believe that's kind of how it works and it's just kind of a whole please stay away from me type thing um the reason that the plants some plants revert not all not those ones they don't revert because it's helpful to them but say a monstera, so variegation just happens. It just happens. Sometimes plants are born. <laughs> Sometimes plants grow variegated. 
and if that variegation doesn't hinder the plant it'll cap it'll just keep growing and as it gets more light it can get more variegated because it doesn't need as much chlorophyll to keep going but if there isn't enough light it'll just go back to being green because there's just no benefit it doesn't care how it looks plants don't care how they look so we always go on about our plants getting burnt in the sun but if you look at a lot of if you look at um pictures of monstera in like florida growing up trees they're all burnt to shit but the plant doesn't care because for every leaf that's burned down below the amount of light it got to get burnt has produced another amazing leaf and you you often see that they get burnt less as they go up as they get more like hardened to the sun not always but yeah the plant Plants don't care if they're aesthetically pleasing. It's us that care about that, which is often why people are like, why does my plant look so, well, what's wrong with my plant? There's nothing wrong with it. It's actually fine. It just looks a bit shit. Uh, you know, it's got like a few crispy edges and it's just not, it's not dying, but it's just not looking the way that you want it to. <laughs> I also get asked quite often about caring for variegated plants and how to stop them reverting. You can't stop them reverting, but generally the issue is that they don't have enough light. However, you need to protect variegated plants from the light because it burns them. Because as I said at the start, in very, very layman's terms, chlorophyll acts like sunscreen. It's It won't stop it being burned, but it will be less likely to be burned than the white parts. There's not really a lot you can do about it other than put it in a really, really, the brightest spot you can. You need to control the light. You you need to have control of the light. So if you put it in the brightest, your brightest window and then put like a really sheer curtain under it so it, the light is diffused. Other than that, there's not really a lot you can do. Um, I have a tie constellation, as I've mentioned a thousand times. And the variegation on it is whilst it's stable and that it won't go green the the variegation you get varies a lot some of them are just speckled all over and some have quite a lot of i've had like half moon leaves the white parts do not last long at all they brown really really quickly and it they look amazing when they first come through because i've got it it's in a west facing window about four feet away from the window probably less now and it's under aquarium lights. Uh, it doesn't burn anymore, it used to burn, but the, it almost glows it's so white when it when the leaves leave leaves when the leaves first unfurl, but very quickly they just go brown and a little bit sad looking. So I actually prefer the more evenly variegated, like a, the speckly ones rather than a lot of um sectoral variegation. It does look incredible, but not for long. And sometimes it doesn't happen if the light is just perfect for it. But often when people say, why is the white bit browning? That's it, because that's what it does. I think that might be the reason why um, pink variegation is so popular. Other than the fact that it's pink, got a new leaf coming. Um, what I have learned about uh, Pink Princess is that they come through really pink. So I'm always like, oh my god, look at the amount of variegation on that when it hardens off. Like this one looked so variegated and I've got like a bit. Um, so yeah, so if you look here, um, it doesn't look variegated. If you look on the back, it does. Weird. Interesting though. That's not happened on any of the back backs of the others, but um, mm. oh, this one. Look how much pink there looks to be on that. So much. And then when you turn it over and look at the front of the leaf, oh my God, my notebook's going to fall off on that. There we go. There's just a bit down the side. Hmm. Oh, it's all the right way up. Nice. Uh, so yeah, you can't stop them reverting if they really, really want to. All you can do is give them more light and generally like better care. The better the plant perceives that it's growing, the more likely it is to just keep... It will take effort for the plant to revert. I mean, it won't sit and think about it, but there'll be like little cell processes going on saying, we can't do this anymore, it's not good enough. So the better you care for your plant and the more light you give it, the more likely you are to get variegation. 
but equally if it decides it's reverting it is reverting if you get reverted leaves um i would tend to wait until you've got one that's fully reverted then just snip it back to the next no to the last node and just keep doing that until you can get a variegated one back that's kind of all you can do uh, and another this is um purely from like a bit of uh, my own research and experience and and also because i see people say like answering this all the time incorrectly and there is this room it's not a rumor but this sort of thought that if a plant is fully variegated i.e completely white it can't survive now this is not true it is broadly true <laughs> But it's not entirely true. I have a fully reverted Diamond Bay Agrionema. It only produces white leaves. I've never ever, since right, so a couple of years ago, all the leaves fell off and I propagated it. And it has never produced any chlorophyll on the leaves. But it's still going and it produces leaves. It grows quite quickly. The issue is that we only ever have two leaves at a time, one that's growing and one that looks like shit. I'll put a picture on the screen. But that is what it always looks like. So whilst it's not true that they will die, it's really hard to get them to do anything other than just, it's just, it is just alive. It's, I'm not saying it's dying or it's unhealthy. I'm just saying it's not ever going to produce a little bit like a uh, Hoya Kerry eye. No, not even that, because it does keep producing a new leaf. Just, it's never really going to get any bigger. It might, but unlikely. That's what we're stuck with. But if you like the leaf that you've got, that might be it. Uh, and the other thing, I get asked this quite a lot and I don't actually know the answer, but I know generally the, basically I don't know if what I'm saying is 100% true, but it's broadly true. And that is if my Thai constellation produces, goes to seed, will I get variegated babies? Or a uh, monster elbow? With Monstera Albo, they quite often fruit, produce seeds, you can plant them, and but you will have exactly the same chance of getting a variegated plant as if it wasn't variegated. So the variegation doesn't pass from the parent to the child. It's uh, it's just chance. The, there might be a slightly higher chance of getting it because it is in its genes, but it's certainly not a guarantee. So Thai constellations are not grown from seed, they are taken as cuttings and then they're cloned using tissue culture so that's not really a thing uh if you yeah so that's monstera albo can produce babies you can grow the baby the you can grow them from the seeds that the variegated monstera produces but the seeds probably won't produce variegated plants they might but they probably won't thai constellation on the other hand they also can produce fruit go to seed but the seeds are almost certainly um infertile so you won't be able to be infertile in plants they're, they're probably not going to grow uh if they did they probably i don't i don't think they would all research suggests that they wouldn't but if they did technically i suppose they would grow variegated because it's changed at a gene level but i don't know I just had to pause then and check the time. This is a problem with filming on your phone because I've got, we're going to view a house and my boyfriend's working so I'm going with my mum, <laughs> um, which is extremely exciting because it's, it's got a dining room which I could use as a plant room, which is extremely exciting. Uh, it's also like quite a big, not it's not a big house, but it's a decent sized house uh, and it's quite cheap for my area. Obviously it is an absolute hole but I'm so excited about renovations. But anyway, I'm just going to view it today and I'm very excited. Anyway, um, that is everything. I may have to film this entire thing again because I was kind of rushing because um, I have a lot of work to do over the next two days. But what I'm hoping is that I can get it all done today, um, spend tomorrow cleaning, and then tonight, if I get everything done, I'm going to have a bottle of wine and I've got Call the Midwife and Trigger Point to watch. And I'm very, very excited, but I can only do that if I get everything finished. And if I get everything finished and have my bottle of wine tomorrow night, I'm at work at nine on Wednesday. <sighs> it's really not the same. So um, that's my weekend, Monday and Tuesday. It's kind of my weekend. 
uh, sorted because Sunday was predictably, I did go for my run and played Stardew Valley. I've, cut, I've gone off a tangent again. Anyway, that's everything for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. Bye.